praise. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We bless your name, Jesus. We give your name glory. We give your name honor. Oh God, we give your name praise this morning. Oh God, we thank you, oh God. We thank you from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Father, your name alone is worthy to be praised. Father, we thank you now. We give you glory. We give you the honor. God, we give you praise this morning, oh God. Hallelujah. We're standing all over the building. Amen. It's prayer time in the temple. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's prayer time. Father, we thank you now. Father, we give your name praise. We give your name the glory and the honor. We thank you, oh God, for this is the day that you have made. And we choose to rejoice and we choose to be glad. Father, we thank you, oh God, for touching us with your finger of love this morning. Thank you for breathing the breath of life upon us this morning. In the name of Jesus, thank you for watching over us last night as we slumbered and slept. Father, we thank you, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that we got up with new mercies this morning. Hallelujah. Great is our faithfulness unto us. And so, Lord, we say thank you, oh God. We come for no other reason but to give your name praise. We come for no other reason but to give your name glory and honor. Hallelujah. We come to bless you, oh God. We come like the testimony of David that I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall forever be in my mouth. We come to praise you this morning because you're worthy, oh God. We come to praise you because we realize it's in you that we live, move, and have our being. And so, Lord, we say thank you this morning. Oh, God, we praise your mighty name, oh, God. For you are a great God. You are excellent, God. You are magnificent, God. You are sovereign, God. And we say thank you this morning, oh, God. Hallelujah, God. Remember these, your people, Father, who have come into your house today, oh, God. You know what they stand in need of today. And we all stand in need of one thing or another. But, God, you're able to meet every need this morning. You're able to turn every person, oh God, from the crown of our head to the very soles of our feet, Father, leaving nothing undone, leaving nothing untouched, oh God, in the name of Jesus, God, minister to every need this morning, Father, in the name of Jesus, and God, we thank you now, God, remember those who's listening online, God, you know what they stand in need of today, and certainly you have no respect of person, and so Lord, I thank you, oh God, that while you're moving right here, God, you you're moving over there, and you're moving over there, and you're moving over there, and so Lord, we thank you, God, because you are an omniscient God, hallelujah, you're omnipresent God, you're everywhere present at the same time. And so, Lord, we thank you, O oh God. We give your name thanks and praise, O oh God. Remember the sick and afflicted everywhere, Father. Remember those in the hospital this morning. Remember those that's dealing with COVID this morning, God. We ask that you would heal now in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, that you would make their bodies every whit whole, Father. Even now, God, from the crown of their hair to the very soles of their feet, Father. In the name of Jesus, oh, God, that you would speak life now, God, to call somebody to live and not die. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you that you are the great physician this morning, and you've never lost a case. And so, Lord, we thank you now, God. We submit to your will and your authority. And so, Lord, we thank you now, God, that healing is the children's bread. And so, Lord, we thank you for healing now, God. Healing upon the nation now. Healing upon your people, God. In the name name of Jesus. God, we thank you. God, save today. God, deliver today, God. Remember the president today. Remember the vice president today. Remember those in office. In the name of Jesus, oh God, help them to lead this country, Father, in the way that you would have it to go. In the name of Jesus, God, because this world is headed to hell in a handbasket. But God, you're able, God. You said, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek your face oh God and turn from our wicked ways then you'll hear from her and so Lord we thank you now God that we want to hear from you oh God we need to see your hand move oh God in the name of Jesus have your way oh God in the name of Jesus we declare the enemy to be a liar I thank you now God that he is a defeated foe today in the name of Jesus oh God I thank you Oh God, 
that we have victory over the enemy. We got victory over the devil. And so, Lord, I thank you now, God, for the authority that you've given unto us in the name of Jesus. And God, we say thank you, for the enemy is out to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus came that I might have life, and that more abundantly. And so, Lord, we thank you this morning now for the victory that we have in Christ Jesus. I thank you, O God, that your son died that we might live. Your son died that we might walk in victory. And so, Lord, we thank you this morning, God, in the name of Jesus, O God, have died. Way, God. Move up and down these aisles, Father. Move up and down every person, Father. Move in the city of our soul. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Move in our minds today, God. Move in our hearts today, God. In the name of Jesus, everything in us that's not like you, take it out in the name of Jesus. Destroy it at the root, Father, where there will be no more growth. And so, Lord, we thank you now, God. God, have your way now, God. Holy Ghost of God, arrest our wheels now. Holy Ghost, hallelujah. Have your way now, God. Take control of our thoughts. Take control of our minds today. Take control of our heart today, God. Take control of our mouth, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Have your way at the gas station. Have thine own way, God. Do what you want to do, Father. Do what you will to do. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God. And we thank you now, God. We thank you for signs, wonders, and miracles. We thank you now, God. That somebody stands in need of a miracle. And God, you're able to do all things. And so, Lord, we thank you. We thank you in advance now. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you now as we get ready to go further in our divine worship service. Hallelujah. Let your Shekinah glory be in this place. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you. Let your glory train fill this temple. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you. God, that we can't do nothing until you come. Father, we thank you now. Oh, God, have your way. We open up our hearts. We open up our minds. God, to receive that of you today, Father. God, we need more of you. Hallelujah. God, I thank you. The ordinary just won't do. Hallelujah. We need more. More of you today. In the name of Jesus. Father, impart yourself even the more. Hallelujah. Glory to God within us today. God, that we'll be more like you. That we'll talk more like you. That we'll walk like you. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you today. Because you're a great God. You're an awesome God. Hallelujah. You're an awesome Father. Father, we thank you for hearing the hearts and the minds of your people. Hallelujah. Thank you for hearing the prayers today, O God. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory because it all belongs to you. It's in the name of the Lord Jesus that we do pray. Amen and amen. Come on and clap your hands and bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on and clap your hands and bless the Lord.
turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, hallelujah, I don't know if you didn't know it or not. Hallelujah, but God is so amazing. Hallelujah, glory to God. Tell somebody else, I don't know if you didn't know it or not. Hallelujah, but God is so amazing. Hallelujah, I can testify. Hallelujah, he's amazing to me. Hallelujah, glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, he's so amazing. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on and clap your hands for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, you can do better than that. I said clap your hands for Jesus. That was our right for Biden. But come on, clap your hands for Jesus. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Our soon coming King, our kingdom redeemer. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, bless his name. Hallelujah. We give him the glory and the honor. Hallelujah. I just wish somebody would bless the God of their salvation. Hallelujah. Because simply because you know he's amazing. Simply because you know it wasn't you that woke yourself up this morning. Hallelujah. Simply because, come on here, he started you on your way. Hallelujah. 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 The Bible said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Come on here. That means that you ought to be saying something to God. Hallelujah. That means your mouth ought to be open. Your hands ought to go flying. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Oh, God. I realize, I realize if it had not been for him, I would be crazy. Hallelujah. I feel like I would have been going under. Hallelujah. But now unto him who's able to keep me from falling. Okay. Now unto him who's able. Hallelujah. To keep me from falling. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I call. Thank you. Woo. Glory to God. Because he deserves this. Come on here. Hallelujah. I praise him like I do. Hallelujah. Because I couldn't get through it without him. Come on here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I praise him like I do. Come on here. Hallelujah. Because if it had not been. Oh, God. Oh, the Lord on my side. The Lord on my side. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The enemy would have swallowed me up. Come on here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But thanks be unto God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The diagnosis would have took me under. Come on here. All the thanks be unto God. Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He's my healer. He's my redeemer. He's my deliverer. Come on here. Oh God. Come on here. Oh yes God. Yes God. He brought me through some tight places. Hallelujah. He kept my mind straight on him. Oh God. When I thought I was losing it. Come on here. Oh when I wanted to give up. When I wanted to go in the time. Oh God. Oh God. He kept me. He kept me. He kept me. He kept me. When the car accident took, should have took me out. He blocked it. Come on here. And he wouldn't let it be. Glory to God. Oh, God. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. Hallelujah. They told part of their testimony. But you don't know like the Lord, like they know what the Lord has done for them. Hallelujah. You can only see it. Come on here. You don't know the nights they cried. You don't know the nights they wanted to give up. You don't 
there's more. Hallelujah. Anybody can testify. Hallelujah. That you're still alive because there's more. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God ain't done with you yet. He ain't through with you yet. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody holler more. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Still more to me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Than what you see. Glory to God. Oh, God. Oh, we bless his name. We bless his name. We're clapping our hands all over the building. Hallelujah. Yes, we are. Hallelujah, we're clapping our hands, giving God glory. Hallelujah, because victory is mine. Hallelujah, victory belongs to me. Hallelujah, victory belongs to y'all. Hallelujah, glory to God. of the Lord. Certainly we do honor the apostle this morning. Amen. In her absence. Amen. We honor Elder Lynch today. Amen. Honor each and every one of you. Amen. For being in the house of the Lord. Certainly one more time. Thank God to see Sister Tornette, Sister Robin. Amen. And mother over here. Amen. Thank God for each of you being here. And my babies over there. Amen. Thank God. Amen. For them being in the house of the Lord one more time. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want to tell y'all, Sister Robin, Sister Twinette is not new to us. Amen. But Sister Robin and Mother, we ain't crazy. Amen. We just love to praise the Lord. I know last Sunday was a little different. It was a little quiet. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But we really do love to praise the Lord. Glory to God. Because the songwriter said, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul start thinking about it and my soul start crying out. Glory to God. I thank God for saving me. Not only did he save me, Sister Robin, but he delivered me. He set my soul free. Hallelujah. Heal my body. Heal my mind. Yes, Lord. That's why I praise him the way I do. Amen. Glory to God. Ain't no secret what we do over here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because when we realize just how good God's been to us. Come on here. Hallelujah. Does He deserves a praise. Glory to God. He deserves a hallelujah. He deserves a hand wave. Come on here. The songwriter said if I couldn't say a word. Come on here. I just wave my hand. Oh God. Yes, Lord. So we thank the Lord today. Amen. Amen. For all of you being here today, remember, we thank God for the absent part of the church. Amen. Glory to God. We just bless the Lord even today. Amen. Being another youth Sunday. Amen. Thank God for the youth that are present. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. The others are out. Amen. Others at home, at work. Amen. Doing what they do. Amen. But we thank God today. Amen. For those that are present. Amen. And those who want to be used by the Lord. Amen. Amen. At this time, we are going to have, amen, our inspirational moment. Amen. Coming from Brother Jeremiah. Amen. Come on, let's receive Brother Jeremiah as he comes. Amen. To share an inspirational moment with you. Amen. From the word of God. Amen. Amen. Come on, dude. Clap your hands one more time for him. Amen. We bless God today. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. My topic today is, where is your faith? Okay. In times of trouble, such as sickness and disappointment, it tends to seem like God is far away. We think to ourselves, how could God let this happen to us? Why isn't God doing anything? We even start questioning and saying, can he even do it at all? If you are not experiencing a time in your life, a time of difficulty, you should get prepared. As Jesus states in John 16 and 33, these things I have spoken unto you, 
that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye should have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. In Luke 8, 22 through 25, and Mark 4, 35 through 40, we see, we find Jesus and his disciples on the boat. Mm -hmm. Little did they know they would experience one of the craziest adventures yet. Out of nowhere, a raging storm appears. The disciples thought the storm would take them out. There are situations we will face that seem like there is no way out or we can't do anything to fix it. Jesus. That's how that's how the disciples felt that night. Mm -hmm. The disciples tried to keep the boat afloat, but the disciples finally decided to turn to Jesus, even though they saw him sleeping peacefully. Okay. Mark 8, 38 is where we see the disciples saying, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Mm -hmm. Jesus awakes from his sleep and calms the storm as he says three, these three simple words, peace be still. Yes. The disciples were left in amazement and awe. We shouldn't get down on ourselves just because of our lack of faith. The disciples witnessed some of Jesus' greatest miracles and were still and were still consumed with fear. Mm -hmm. We should ask ourselves the question of why do we go through worries and struggles when we could just ask Jesus to calm the storm? Yeah. If we believe in God, if we believe God's word, if we trust what he says completely, then we must know that God is with us. Isaiah 41 and 10 says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. Yeah. Matthew 28 and 20 says, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. Do we believe he is with us? When, we're cons when we consume with fear and doubt and the wind and waves are taking us under, we can be assured that he is. But we also must remember that our faith requires action. Yes, it does. Faith without works is what? Dead. 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 Right? Okay. Faith requires us to seek God in all things at all times. We can't trust God in some things and not trust him with certain things. My, my when faith and fear collide, turn to Jesus. Seek God, enter to his presence, and trust his word. Yeah. When the storms of life hit, we won't have to dust off our Bibles or go searching for our lost prayer because we'll know where our faith is. Amen. Amen. Let's give Brother Jeremiah, amen, another hand clap. Where is your faith? Amen. Glory to God. That's the question you must ask yourself. Amen. Where is your faith? Amen. Amen. How many got faith in God? Hallelujah. The Bible says if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, amen, you got enough faith. But I want to let you in on a secret, amen. Your faith has to grow. It must not stay at a mustard seed, amen. Glory to God, but your faith requires, amen, movement. It requires growth, amen. Glory to God. The Bible says that we go from faith to faith, glory to glory. And so therefore, amen, your seed must grow. Your faith must increase, amen, amen. But the question is, where is your faith? The truth of the matter is that sometimes our faith is tested on every side. Amen. Glory to God. But your faith must stand trial. Amen. But I stand on the word of God to say that I believe God. Amen. Amen. Come on. Let's bless the Lord for him one more time. Amen. And I can say that you're wonderful, but it doesn't seem good enough. I can say that you're kind, but that would miss the mark. Say that you're beautiful, but to me you are so much more. How do I communicate exactly who you are? I'm trying to convey the sentiments of my heart and say,
um, uh, but yet we're anxious at the same time because of the unknown. According to the CDC website, 58.5 of Americans have it, has had at least one shot uh, of the vaccine, uh, but yet we're thinking about or we're going on to imagine what life would be like now when this pandemic is over. We're trying to figure out, are we going back to what we used to know as our normal or what will become our new normal? Yes, more people are getting vaccinated and according to the CDC, all the news and the numbers, uh, the COVID cases and deaths in America seem to be getting smaller. However, we've now discovered or they've now discovered that there's a new variant to the virus called Delta. They said that Delta now will be worse than the prior strands of the virus. So at one point, my point to you is that some part of us are now anticipating life after the pandemic, but at the same time, we got the unknown because every time we turn around when it seems like things are getting better, it looks like things seem to get worse. Um, there are less and less restrictions now in places. True? They tell you if you've been vaccinated, you don't have to wear your mask in and out of some places. I will behoove you to keep your mask on. Glory to God. At the end of the day, glory to God, we, we're taking away less and less restrictions. Uh, uh, we're, we're outside now without our mask because we feel like we've been vaccinated and we feel like we'll be all right. But I want to serve notice on the, vi the vaccine does not prevent you from getting the virus. It only supports to help with the symptoms of the virus. So keep tell somebody, keep your mask on. Keep your mask on. Keep sanitizer in your pocketbook. Glory to God. And stay at home when you can or when it's necessary. Our sporting events now are allowing fans back into the stands and restaurants are now allowing us to sit down and enjoy a little dining. Cruise ships are now testing the waters to see whether or not they can let some people back on the ship. Uh, why? Because we're now getting back to some form of normalcy. Come on here. The sad thing about normalcy is that often it's often followed by complacency and mediocrity. Come on here. Uh, mediocrity. Come on here. Understand that the virus has not disappeared. Uh, uh, people, glory to God. People are still getting sick. People are still dying. Come on here. But we're able, but we're at the beginning to be able now to envision what life will look like after the virus. Come on here. The important thing that we must remember never to do is to become too comfortable. Come on here. If the truth be told, y'all, we've already become a little too comfortable and we're still in a pandemic. Come on here. The truth of the matter is, yes, when people now are going on vacations and people are doing everything now that they're used to doing, but tell somebody you still got to be careful. Don't you get too comfortable. Come on here. Uh, at the end of the day, if we stop for a moment and we look back over this past year, there are a lot of things that we were not able to do, but there are a lot of things that we were able to grow even through the pandemic. Some businesses closes and some businesses started during the pandemic. Come on here. Now you find that a lot of businesses are closing. Uh, they don't have no resources. Chicken Coop in Charlotte, 59 years of being here in Charlotte, they had to close their doors because the resources or the finances, not to mention now, we're getting ready to go on a meat shortage. Come on here. At the end of the day, after 59 years, they closed their doors. I uh, would seem to be normal to some, ain't normal to others. Y'all ain't talking. Uh, because of the virus now, there begin to be a greater hunger for God. Come on here. People now begin to understand that there really is a God. People started realizing that we got a need for God. Come on here. Ah, if there was a need for prayer when the pandemic came, hallelujah, people who ain't prayed started praying. Come on here. People who ain't never attended church. Come on here. They found them an online church. Y'all ain't talking. Ah, understand now gone are the days of entertainment. Come on here. Ah, Ah, glory to God, long are the days, glory to God, are the concert style of praise and worship. Ah, and people was tired of the antics, come on here. Ah, they said, I need God in this season. It ain't about who gonna make me jump, jump, come on here. Ah, at the end of the day, I need to know what God is saying in this season, come on here. Ah, 
God. You understand? People now wanted to have an encounter or an experience with God. It wasn't about coming in the building per se. Ah, but I needed to hear from God. I needed God to keep me. Come on here. I needed God to keep my family members. Come on here. Oh, people started praying, y'all. People started getting saved. Glory to God. They weren't saved before. Why? Because the pandemic put a little bit of fear in them. Ah, but can I tell you, glory to God, that when we are approaching the end of the pandemic, we got to realize, glory to God, I don't care who found God. I don't care who got saved. At the end of the day, you better not let the glory depart. Come on here. Ah, a glory to God. Now, I'm not one of those people who say like Amazon, he's going to take away the brick and the mortar stores. Ah, I don't know what's going to happen. Ah, glory to God. But understand now, I'm not one of those ones that say that the church is going to be obsolete because the reality of it is that we are the church. Y'all ain't talking. This is just a building. Y'all ain't talking. Tell somebody I'm the church. I'm the church. We must clearly understand that the church is not a peddler of products and services like Amazon, but the church is the body of Christ. We are the baptized believers, and we're supposed to work together, as the Bible says, fitly joined together, that we all are one body. Come on here. We're many members, but one body. Come on here. And we're supposed to work together. We're supposed to be the light of the world. Come on here. We're supposed to be the son of the earth. Glory to God. Ah, but the Bible says that if the son loses his savor, it's good for nothing. Come on here. Ah, we just trotting down. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Under the feet of men. Glory to God. But tell somebody, don't let the glory depart. Whatever you do, don't let the glory depart. But some would ask Pastor Tia, what is the glory? I'm glad you asked. Glory as a verb tense. Come on here. It's used to describe what what we give to God, we give God glory, we give God praise and adoration, we give God the shouting of our mouth, come on here, and we wave our hand, come on here, oh, glory to God, ah, but you understand one songwriter said that when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my hand go up, my mouth flop open, why, because I want to give him glory, why, because at the end of the day, he does Deserves my glory. But when I lift my hands and say, Thank you, Jesus, that's giving him glory. In sign language, when they can't talk, glory to God, they just wave their hand. Come on here. Why? Because they understand that's glory. Come on here. Ah, we must understand and learn that the adjective form of glory, ah, God, it describes God's attributes. Come on here. It means that he's all powerful. It means that he's majestic. It means that he's a great God. Oh, tell somebody God is glory. Oh, yes, Lord. The other definition now, it describes the manifestation of God's presence. Come on here. It describes the heaviness of him. It describes the weight of his glory. It describes the weight of his presence. That's why when he shows up, come on here, he don't show up for nothing. That's why when he shows up, he comes to do a work, glory to God. Why? Because his glory is in the house. You know we say it. Let your glory train fill the temple. Which simply means we want to experience your greatness. We just want to honor you for being God. I God. But the glory had departed. Oh, tell somebody don't let the glory depart. Oh, God. And so for clarity's sake, y'all, what am I saying today? Two things. Is that one, don't let the glory of God exit the building. Don't let the glory of God leave the church. Number two, is that we don't stop giving God glory. Understand, let me repeat it again. Because I want y'all to really understand that one, you can't let the glory of God exit the building. And two, come on here, that you can't stop giving God glory. Ah, in our text, y'all, we see that that the glory had departed from Israel because of their lack of obedience to God and because they had become superstitious. Now, it ain't about the black cat. Come on here. It ain't about the umbrella up inside the house. That was all superstition. Come on here. At the end of the day, glory to God, they chose not to worship 
worship God. They chose to do their own thing. Oh God. And they were worshiping idols in their nation. And they became complacent. They got a little comfortable with God. They thought they knew God like that. Come on here. But tell somebody you don't know him like that. Come on here. Oh no. You don't know God. You know we think we got God. Pinpoint to how he gonna move. But tell somebody he gonna move any way he wanna move. Come on here. Ah yes Lord. And so now glory to God. The glory had departed from Israel. But let me give you a little background about what's going on here. Understand that the children of Israel were at war with the Philistines. And basically we see on the news the same thing that's going on right now. It's a continuation of the war that started back then. In the first four, uh, verses of chapter 4 in 1 Samuel we see that the Philistines had killed 4,000 Israelites. And they had asked themselves why has the Lord smitten us today? During this pandemic, y'all, we have often asked the Lord, why have you smitten us with this pandemic? Why are we dealing with this? Come on here. But you got to remember, glory to God, that the Israelites, come on, I told y'all that the Israelites was disobedient. I told y'all that the Israelites were complacent. I told y'all that they were living these mediocre lives and they had gotten too comfortable. Well, I believe now, and y'all heard me say this before, that the reason why we're in a pandemic now is because we've been disobedient. Come on here. We've been gotten a little comfortable. Glory to God. And we're living mediocre. Come on here. Ah, uh, But let me talk a little bit now about the Ark of the Covenant. Come on here. The Ark of the Covenant. It was a beautiful symbol of God's presence. It was God's glory that visited the house. Come on here. It was made from shittim wood. Come on here. Which is extremely hard wood and was overlaid with good. What I'm trying to get y'all to understand that it was made with some good stuff. Come on here. It was a symbol. It was a type of Christ. Come on here. In the Old Testament, the top of the Ark of the Covenant was covered by the mercy seat. The mercy seat was a solid plate of pure gold. I'm still trying to paint the picture that it was a beautiful thing to see. Come on here. And there were two uh, cherubims facing each other that represent the throne of God in heaven. The ark was so full of God's glory uh, and it was not to be touched. That's just how beautiful it was. That's just how sanctified it was. Come on here. Could nobody, just know anybody touch it. Come on here. At the end of the day, you know you've been to mama's house and there was a cure of uh, the curio over there that got all them things on their mama said you better not touch it come on here ah, that's how it was with them ah, ah, and the children of Israel with the ark of the covenant God said you better not touch it come on here at the end of the day glory to God ah, the ark was so full of God's glory ah, but it was not to be touched by human hands even do the transporting come on here but in 2nd Samuel chapter number 6 ah, when Uzziah reached out to touch the ark because it looked like it was slipping. Come on here. It looked like it was falling. But Isaiah lost his life. But people would say that God was a bad God. People would say that God was so cruel. Glory to God. Because he uh, he only was trying to stabilize the ark. He was only trying to keep it from falling. Come on here. But when God said the thing, y'all better believe that God mean what he said. If he said don't touch it, come on here. You better not touch it. Uh, so Isaiah lost his life. Come on here. Why? Because of disobedience. I do want to put a pin in right there. I want to behoove y'all as the people of God that you've got to be obedient to what God is saying right now. Come on here. Because you don't want to lose your life in the process. I know we say that God again is a God of love. Come on here. But he loves you so much. Glory to God that he'll execute judgment when it's necessary. Come on here. Uh, you understand? Tell somebody you better be obedient. Uh -huh, you better be obedient. Uh, so now Isaiah was trying to stabilize the ark. Uh, but what you need to understand is that God said don't touch it. Uh, he commanded them not to touch it. At the end of the day, again, he lost his life. Uh, it's true, y'all. Isaiah had good intentions. Uh, uh, the truth of the matter is a lot of us have good intentions. Uh, but it leads us down the path the wrong way. Uh, we could have good intentions. Uh, but if it ain't what God said, it ain't even good, no. 
no more. Come on here. It's just an intention. Come on here. Ah, talking about the glory. Sadly, many now try to carry him. Ah, God around. Come on here. And they carry him around in a box. Come on here. Ah, when they want to. Come on here. So many people put all their faith and their trust in a magnificent building. We got these beautiful edifices. Come on here. Ah, we got the best fly. We trying to see who got the best flyer for our next service or conference. Come on here. Ah, who got the best surround sound system? Who got the best video equipment? Come on here. Ah, who got the stage, glory to God, that looked like Carnegie Hall? Come on here. But at the end of the day, preachers are more worried about her, more worried about how much money we raise. Come on here. At the end of the day, than they are about souls. Come on here. But we must understand that the glory is not in the building. Come on here. Ah, the building is not the church. Glory to God. But the church is right here. Uh, somebody say, I am the church. Uh, tell somebody else, say, I am the church. Now when the word was brought back to Eli, the high priest of what happened, that his sons had got killed and the ark of the covenant was taken. Eli fell on his back. And the Bible said that he broke his neck and he died. Ah, uh, his daughter-in-law now, uh, Phineas's wife, was going into labor, uh, and she gives birth now to a male child, uh, and she names this child Ichabod uh, because she realized that she started to reflect on what was going on. Uh, she realized that the glory of God uh, was not where it needed to be. Uh, the glory of God was not active uh, among the people. Ah, uh, uh, she was sad. She was burning down, glory to God, because she understood that God was not being glorified. And so now she's so sad. She said, my son shall be called Ichabod. Come on here. Ah, oh, his father was an actor, right? His grandfather was an actor, right? His kinfolks was an actor, right? Ah, oh, but the glory had departed. Tell somebody, so she named him Ichabod, because the glory had departed. Ah, oh, let me interject this right here. And the ark being captured now was not the reason for the glory to depart. The glory had already gone. Come on here. Uh, the capturing of the ark was just a manifestation of the glory being departed. So what am I saying here is that we've been doing a lot of stuff in church and the glory has already been departed. We keep coming hallelujah and we keep jumping and shouting but the glory has already exited the building. Oh, we keep doing all these things. But if God ain't being glorified, then Ichabod is your child's name. Oh, God, you got to understand, y'all. That when worldliness and disobedience and sin starts manifesting itself in the lives of the people and in the lives of the church, come on here, it's clear that God has exited the building. I just believe, he said, uh, may the Lord, you know how we used to do it, may the Lord watch between me and thee uh, while we're absent one from another. Uh, I just believe that's how God is uh, in some of our churches uh, because the glory has already departed. We're focusing on the wrong stuff. Huh? We're focusing on the wrong things. Huh? At the end of the day, we got to focus on huh? being in the presence of the true and living God. Huh? Because the Bible declares huh? that in his presence huh? is the fullness of joy. Huh? And at his right hand huh? are the pleasures forevermore. Come on here. Are we focusing on huh? too many things? Glory to God. We focusing on who got the best choir. Huh? We focusing on who got the best worship team. But I declare if you just make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Come on here. That's what he requires of you. Come on here. At the end of the day, we've got too comfortable. We've gotten too complacent. Glory to God. And so at the end of the day, glory to God, we've gotten too complacent and too media using mediocrity and in the church. Glory to God. And so for much of what the church has become in the before the pandemic, it is said that the glory has to Departed. The church building represents God. But when the glory of God has left the building, then the church is no longer a place of healing. The church is no longer a place of deliverance. The, play, the church is no longer a place of breakthrough and miracles. It's just simply a place of entertainment. Come on here. A lot of our churches now are just entertaining the people. 
A lot of our churches now are just tickling their fancy. Uh, ain't nobody telling them how to live right. Come on here. Ain't nobody telling them how to uh, live holy uh, and live righteous. Come on here. At the end of the day, we're going to sing you to death. Come on here. Oh, God. Uh, at the end of the day, singing is good. Uh, and it has its place. Glory to God. But it's the word of God uh, that you got to stand on uh, in the latter day. Uh, at the end of the day, glory to God. The glory of God has left the building and you understand that the building again becomes a social gathering. Come on here. It becomes habitual Sunday. Routines. Glory to God. We had Ichabod choirs who could sing wonderfully. We had Ichabod praise teams that made us jump, jump. Come on here. We had Ichabod preachers that gave us sugar-coated messages filled with a bunch of fluff. Come on here. Glory to God. We're going to church now. And I would become more of a religious activity, huh? more than a relational experience. Come on here. Ah, uh, you gotta have a relational experience. Huh? Because of that now, huh? We just doing something on a Sunday morning, glory to God. But post-pandemic church, uh, we must make sure now uh, that we don't let the glory depart. Come on here, that you don't lose the glory, glory to God. The problem now I'm finding uh, that in during the pandemic, uh, so many people are staying home. Come on here, uh, so many people feel like they don't have to dwell with their brothers and sisters in the house of God. Uh, I was talking to somebody yesterday and they said, oh girl, I don't, I, I understand what my pastor was doing. I so love that we don't have to go to a building. I said, but I will disagree with you because at the end of the day, glory to God, being at home looking at a phone and looking at a TV, don't just get it for you. It's something about that when you're in the presence of God. It's something about that full experience where you feel the power of God, that you feel the anointing of God, that you're joined together with your brothers and your sisters. I disagree. If you stay home, that's your business. But you gotta be very careful that you don't let the glory depart. Because I find also that most people that's been staying at home, they drying up spiritually. Ah, they ain't got no fight. They ain't got no joy. Come on here. Oh, tell somebody you better get in the house. Oh, God. Tell Somebody, you better be the church. Come on here. Go, call her. We need to be the church huh, and make that most important. Uh, now I know, glory to God, huh, that when we look at Hebrews 10 and 25, huh, it says not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together huh, as the manner of some, huh, but exhorting one another. Huh, and so much the more huh, as ye see the day approaching. Huh. However, y'all, huh, this scripture is not just talking about us coming together, huh, but at the end of the day, what is more so talking about as well well. Huh? One, that you gotta come together, but two, that you hear sound doctrine. Ah, huh? God. Huh? People changing the word of God now huh? to make it fit their lifestyle. Huh? People are changing the word of God huh? to make it fit their pocketbook. Come on here. People are changing the word of God because huh? they want to do their own thing. Huh? After all, it's my thing. Huh? I do what I want to do. Yes. Huh? Oh, God. Huh? But you gotta understand now. Huh? You gotta endure sound doctrine. You got to stick to the word of God. If God didn't say it, come on here. Don't you mess with it. Come on here. Ah, right, God. Tell somebody we got to be the church. Uh -huh. We got to be the church. We must understand that the kingdom of God is at hand. And we need to focus more on the people. Ah, right, more so in the congregation and in the community. Come on here. We got to go beyond these edifices. Come on here. We got to go beyond what we've been doing. He said, I call you to the highways and the hedges. That's all of us. Huh? He called us to the highways and the hedges. Huh? So what am I telling you? Huh? Is that your mission in life huh? is to bring people into the kingdom of God. Huh? You want to know what your purpose is? Huh? The Bible told you huh? uh, that you are to go into the highways and the hedges huh? and you're to compel men and women to come into the body of Christ. Huh? Uh, it's not about the church. Huh? It's, about, it's not about the building, huh? but it's about the church. Come on here. Tell somebody don't let the glory depart. Don't let the glory depart. Coming to church, y'all, is not enough. 
You say, I come to every worship service. So what? You pay your tithes. So what? And thank you. Our God is looking, glory to God, for more people like you, glory to God. He said, I'm tired of these old sacrifices. And Romans 12 and 1 says, Brother, I beseech you, therefore, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice. How you're supposed to do it? Holy, yes, Lord, and acceptable because that's your reasonable service. But so often, pre pandemic, we will go to church just because. But post pandemic, we must get beyond coming to church. Hallelujah. But that we get into the place where we be in the presence of God. At the end of the day, you ought to learn something that is about being in the presence of God. So when you do come to the church, come on here, I tell y'all all the time that it's only supposed to be a spill over of what you do at home. Come on here. Why? Because at the end of the day, I take him everywhere I go. Come on here. Oh, God. So when I come into the house of God, the glory ought to come with me. Come on here. Why? Because the glory been with me. At the end of the day, glory to God. The glory of God is needed in the church because the glory of the Lord has left the building. People will come to the church and don't feel nothing. People have come to the church and have not gotten delivered. People will come to the church and leave the same way they came. Our God. They will have the same attitude. They will have the same demeanor. Are they feeling downtrodden in their spirit? Why? Because the glory of God has left the building. You got to understand that when the glory is gone, there's no prayers answered. Come on here. Our God. You keep crying and ain't being heard. No tears are being wiped away and no healing is taking place. That's because the glory, glory to God, has left the building. But when you have a church, come on here, and you don't see the glory of God in it, then you got a church that does not give God praise because the glory has left the building. But don't let nothing, come on here, separate you from the love of God. That's what Romans 8 and 35 say. He said, who shall separate me from the love of Christ. Shall it be tribulation? Shall it be the pandemic? Or should it be distress? Or should it be persecution? Or should it be famine, the pandemic? Or nakedness, or pearl, or sword? He went on to say that nothing shall separate me from the love of God. Nothing shall separate me from the glory of God. All of his weight, all of his heaviness, all of his presence, I don't I want nothing to come in between me and the glory of God. At the end of the day, I don't want nothing to separate me from how worthy he is, how honorable he is. I don't want nothing to separate me from how great he is. I won't let tribulation, I won't let you come on here. I won't let my family come on here. I won't let my money come on here. I won't let the people on the job. I'll let nothing separate me from the love of Christ Jesus. Are uh, you understand now? Huh? People now are coming. Uh, coming with all these steps uh, and all these plans uh, and I'm a part of a lot of pastoral groups and, and we keep talking about what we feel like the church is going to be like. Uh, uh, they come up with five steps. Uh, they come up with 10, 12, or 20 steps uh, on what they're going to do to maintain the church. Uh, uh, but I understand what they say sometimes. Uh, it's valuable. Come on here. And they make valuable points. Come on here. But at the end of the day, whatever we do, uh, whatever step we take. Huh? Don't let the glory depart. Come on here. Ah, as long as God's presence is in it. Come on here. As long as God is sanctioning it, huh? it's going to be all right. Come on here. Oh, yes. Huh? We can't go back to church as usual. Huh? I know the world seems to be going back huh? to what they call normal. Come on here. They're getting rid of the mass mandate. Huh? And if more people are gathering together huh? and literally forgetting y'all what just happened. Huh? But the church can't afford huh? to lose the glory 
glory. We might lose people, come on here, but don't you lose the glory. At the end of the day, you might lose your money in the stock market, but don't you lose the glory. Come on here. Ah, oh, God, we can't afford to lose the glory. We can't go back to mediocre. Ah, that song said, I can't go back to the way that it used to be. Ah, at the end of the day, now you gotta heighten your relationship with God to the point where you see the glory. That every time you step in the doors of the kingdom, you get to see the glory. Every time you step in the doors of the building, you experience his power. At the end of the day, it all starts with you. Tell somebody, don't let the glory depart. I call. Again, the pandemic has forced us out of the four walls. And we had to go to online messages. People are online here. And they online there. And they online everywhere. But at the end of the day, glory to God. If you ain't experienced the glory, I will behoove you to move your position. I call. It's the glory that we need. It's the weight of God. It's the presence of God. It's his manifested power that we need to see in this season. So what am I saying again? Don't you let the glory depart. Don't you be like that woman who was sad and sorrowful when she had her child. She said, no, I name him. Not Justin, not Daniel, but his name shall be Ichabod because the glory has departed. I call. I ain't experiencing God. That's because the glory has departed. I haven't heard from God. That's because the glory has departed. Oh, you want to know why? You ain't hear from God. I just helped you because the glory has departed. Glory to God. And so I'm encouraging you as the people of God that you got to let the glory remain in the house. Ah, because if it remain in this house, it'll remain in the building. Y'all ain't talking. If it stay in this house, come on here. It will come in the building. Come on here. If it remain in this house, it's going to affect those on the street corner. If it remain in this house, and it'll affect those in your household. If it remain in this house, come on here. It's going to affect those on the street corner and on the job. If it remain in this house, come on here. Hallelujah. I just want the glory. Hallelujah. I want the glory. Hallelujah. I don't want nothing else. I just want your glory. I don't need nothing else. I just want your glory. your glory, that we might experience your power. Father, forgive us because we've allowed the pandemic and things associated with the pandemic, Father, to weigh us down. We've been dealing with sickness. We've been dealing with financial issues. And we've allowed life, God, to take control. 
But Father, we need your glory. God, we need your glory more than anything. Even as you call Moses up to the mountain, you said, boy, I got to show you something. Boy, I got to tell you something. It was your glory that you showed him. Glory to God. It was your glory that he experienced, Father. It wasn't until he got in your presence, God, that he experienced your glory. Father, I thank you, God, for allowing us to experience your glory, even at a greater magnitude. Father, we want your glory to be in the building. But we are the church. We want your glory to be in the church. That it will spill over into the building. That it will spill over into the community. God, that it will spill over into the street corner. Oh, God, we just want to see your glory. That's when lives will be changed. That's when lives will be supernaturally delivered and set free. God, as we just experience your glory. Father, we thank you. God, give us your glory. God, give us your glory. God, give us your glory. Come on, y'all. Tell him, give him your glory. Hallelujah. God, I want to experience your glory. Come on, say it and mean it. I want to experience your glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want to be a conduit of your glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want to be a conduit of your glory. Hallelujah. I want to be a recipient of your glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Even the minister with the priest went to stand to minister and he couldn't because the glory was so heavy. God, we just want to experience your glory, but well, we don't have to preach anymore. When the one song will take us into the presence of God, oh God, we want to experience your glory. When our souls are on fire, I call. When nobody has to pump us, when nobody has to pry us, because we got the glory. Father, we need your glory. God, we need your glory. We need your glory. It's not about all these services. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We just need your glory. That even when we have a service, that your glory shows up. Yes, God, thank you. I, God, that we give you an invitation. I will show forth your glory. Father, we need your glory. We need your power. We need your anointing. It's your anointing that destroys the yoke. It's your anointing that sets the captive free. It's your anointing that saves. It's your anointing that delivers. It's your anointing, God. Oh God, smear us with your anointing. Ah, endow us with your anointing. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you now. Father, that we're getting the attitude that we don't want the glory to depart. Father, don't leave the building. God Almighty, don't leave us the church. Ah, God, thank you. God, help us, God, to make a dwelling place for you. In the name of Jesus, God, a place that you want to reside, a place that you want to dwell in, God, a pure and holy vessel, God, a place that you want to stay, that you want to make habitation with. Ah, God, we just show us your glory. Hallelujah, just show us your glory. That we move us out of the way, that your glory will be seen, oh God. Ah, God, that your glory will be manifested. Show us your glory. Father, we thank you. We give you glory, God. We pray for every person in the building, online. God, that you will begin to manifest your power. That you will begin to manifest your glory. That you will bring your people into the in, the, in your presence, God, with a new experience. That they come out with a new joy. That they come out with deliverance. Oh, God, that they come out with new tongues. That they come out with a new song. That they come out with a new dance. God, I thank you that they come out with a new praise. Hallelujah, because we will know that they've been with you. Father, I thank you today, oh God, for what you're yet doing. In the name of Jesus, Father, we just need your glory. Father, we plead today, Father. God, we just need your glory. Hallelujah, you'll change the atmosphere. You'll change our conditions if the glory just show up. The pandemic will leave if the glory will just show up. Hallelujah, God, we need your glory. Hallelujah, sick bodies will be healed if your glory will just show up. Oh, God, our unsaved children will be saved if your glory will just show up. Ah, God, miracle signs and wonders will take place if your glory just show up. Oh, God, show us your glory. Oh, God, show us your glory. God, show us your glory. Oh, God, we'll see cancer dry up if we just show us your glory. Oh, 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 we just need your glory, God. We just need your glory, God. Oh, God. We're asking.
asking for your glory. We're pleading for your glory. Yes, God, yes, God. Let your glory dwell with us. Let your glory dwell within us. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we thank you. Oh, God, we praise your name. God, we tell you thank you because you're a mighty God and there's nobody like you. Father, we give your name the praise, the honor and the glory. Hallelujah, the honor and the glory because it belongs to you. Father, show us your glory. That's our prayer today. Father, show us your glory. Hallelujah, let your glory reside within us, Father. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. Thank you that it would give you good honor and great pleasure. God, for your glory to reside within us. Hallelujah. You're just looking for some glory workers. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You're just looking for some glory carriers. God, we want to be carriers of your glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not to be seen of men, but that God will be glorified. Father, we thank you. Father, we give you praise, God. We give you glory. We give you honor. Oh, God, and we give you praise. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen and amen. Come on and clap your hands and bless the Lord. Come on and bless him. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Bless him for his glory. Hallelujah. Bless him for his power. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Thank him. Hallelujah. That you're going to be a glory carrier. Hallelujah. Come on. Thank him. Hallelujah. That you're going to be a glory carrier. Hallelujah. That when I walk in the building, come on here. Hallelujah. The glory shall be a, 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 with me. Hallelujah. That lives will be changed when I walk by him. Come on here. Hallelujah. When I open my mouth, that the glory of God will flow out of my mouth. Oh God, 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 hallelujah, hallelujah, we give him glory, we give him honor, we give him praise, and we thank God today, and then for each of you joining on today, amen, those that are listening online, thank you so much for joining, amen, thank you for taking the opportunity, amen, to be a blessing to refuge, amen, hope that you receive something, amen, from the Lord, Amen. That will help you. Amen. Throughout this week, that will help you. Amen. Throughout your journey with the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. We thank you again for listening online. If you want to be a blessing, amen, you may do so financially. Amen. Via cash app, dollar sign, refuge, house of God. Amen. Glory to God. Make sure you see the purple and white logo. Amen. Give the fire. Amen. Refuge House of God, Charlotte, North Carolina. Make sure you see the purple and white logo. Amen. If you're giving via PayPal, it's paypal.me forward slash Refuge House of God. Again, thank you so much. Amen. For being a blessing, for helping us to continue to further the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's our endeavor. Amen. To further the gospel and to expand the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Thank God again. We love you. Amen. Until next week, the peace and the joy of the Lord be yours. Amen.